Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, and all that stuff. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. I'm Illuminar 4, and I've been promising uh, a video about dodge and burn for a while. I've referred to it in a couple of my recent videos, and that's what this video is going to be about. This is going to be a deep dive on the dodge and burn tool. So we're going to hop into that in just one second. First, I just want to ask you, hit that thumbs up. Give me a like if you like my videos. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the videos. I love interacting with the community here. You guys are awesome. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Okay, here's the photo. Now I've done nothing to the photo besides a crop. So if you do the before and after, other than that spot on the left, uh, which I need to take out, it's actually, I think, a pretty nice photo. I'm a little biased because I took it, but before and after, no changes. My point is I've done nothing to the photo. So dodge and burn is basically a way to move the light around in your photo. It allows you to paint in brighter parts of a photo or paint in darker parts of a photo. So to me, it's about managing and rearranging light, which also, if you keep in mind shadows and highlights and the difference between the bright parts and the dark parts, that's contrast. So it is a way to add and control contrast in your images. Very powerful, very fun, very cool tool. Now. I will say that I use it sometimes, I don't use it a ton, and I typically use it sparingly. However, I rarely use it by itself. Now, you can use it by itself if you're just looking to manage the light and the contrast. Um, and keep in mind when you change contrast, that also will often change the look and the impact, visually speaking, of the color in the image. So it's very powerful despite being incredibly, incredibly simple. Let's take a look at it. So dodge and burn. As you can see, you can start painting and then you've got a slider for overall amount. That's basically opacity. So start painting and you have an option here for lighten or darken. You can erase something if you screwed it up. You can pick the size of your brush, you can pick the strength, or you can reset. Literally, it can't get more simple than that. So how does it work? You click on lighten. I'm at 100% and I'm just going to right bracket key to make this big. And all I'm going to do is just paint a really bright spot into the sky. So what did I just do? I just took this blue hour photo and made it look more like an afternoon kind of shot. Hey, I don't really like that, Jim. Okay, hit reset and it's gone. That's how reset works. Darken works the same way. I'm at 100% and I'm gonna right bracket key and I'm gonna darken the sky. All right, I made it really dark and black um, and that looks terrible, but maybe I like part of it, so I just wanna erase it. So click on erase and you can come in here and partially erase that. Oh, never mind. I hate the whole thing. It's terrible. Reset and it's gone. That's how the tool works. One of the really, really cool things I think about the tool is you can do lighten and darken, as far as I know, as many times as you want in the same instance of the tool. In other words, you don't have to paint a little bit and then go get a new layer and use it again. You can use it again and again and again and again. I'm gonna shut up. You get the point. You can keep using it and I love that about it. So um, here's what I would do in a photo like this. I might start out and say darken, my strength is way too high, so I'm gonna bring it down to like, maybe let's try 25. And then I wanna darken this sky a little bit, okay? Um, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm just kinda painting over that and maybe the top of that hill. It's a little bit brighter. You can kinda see what I'm doing here. Um, and you know, I think I've got it about covered. Here's the thing. I think the tool is missing, and that is there's no mask. I cannot see the mask to show me what I've painted or erased. So the only way you can figure that out is you can hit done, and then you can turn the tool on and off. That's an improvement I would like to see, but it is what it is. Um, while I'm on darken, I'm also gonna come over here and darken the water a little bit. Let's say that's a little too bright. This was a longish exposure. This was shot in Bratislava, Slovakia. Um, I was looking, it was, uh, 2012 I was in Bratislava. It's a cool little town and I'm looking at this while I'm trying to paint and notice if I keep painting over and over it's going to get darker and darker because I'm basically hitting it with that 25% strength again and again and again. So let's say I've done all that and I like it and I'm cool. Um, there you go. That's that. Now I might come in and say you know what I need to darken this castle. It's just really too bright but 25 is not enough. Okay well no problem. I'm going to go to 80 here because 80, 81, I'm, I'm moving the mouse a little too much. There you go. 80 sounds good. Uh, my mouse is too big. I'm gonna come in here with this darken at 80 and I'm gonna do a sloppy job. By the way, I recommend going slow and zooming in. I'm not doing either one here because it's a video that I'm recording 
and this is just an example, but on your own photos, take your time, zoom in to be more precise with the mask. Uh, anyway, you can see the roof is really getting a lot darker. This white stuff is getting a little bit darker, but it's not significant um, even at 80. And that's why I think I said, and if I didn't say, I'm going to say now, and that is I use Dodge and Burn in combination with other tools typically. Um, it can have a huge impact on the photo, but I rarely see it as kind of a one and done kind of thing. Again, it'll depend. Um, there we go. That's done. Uh, darken at 80. And let's say I'm going to darken this as well. You can kind of see that, especially on this roof. The, the roof is really getting dark. This really, uh, the kind of more blown out parts are not getting uh, quite as dark, right? So these white parts of this chapel and of that castle over there, just not showing up. Well, let's say I don't like that roof. It's too dark, Jim. That looks terrible. You're right, it does. So strength, um, I'm on lighten. So let's say strength of about 20 and I'm on lighten. And now I'm going to de decrease my brush size and I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to lighten that roof. Even though I like what I did to the, uh, the white parts of this chapel or this church. Let's say with the roof, I don't like what I did. So I'm coming over here and fixing it. And there you go. My point is not, look how pretty a, a job I did. My point is, you can use lighten and darken at different opacities again and again and again on the same instance of dodge and burn. So it's very powerful in that regard. Um, I might come over here to darken and I'm gonna increase the brush. I'm gonna take the strength down to like, let's say 15, 16, let's make it 15. I'm just, I'm so specific sometimes. Um, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna darken up some of these hills uh, just because I think they need to be a little bit darker. You know, they're less important to me in the photo than the street and the chapel and that castle. That's kind of what I want to be looking at and more importantly, what I want the viewer to be looking at. And so a way to draw the viewer's attention is make sure that the brighter stuff, uh, or excuse me, the stuff that you want them to see is going to be brighter and the stuff you're less concerned about is going to be darker. Uh, so there we go. Now that I'm on darken and at 15, I'm also going to darken this wall. I think that's actually 15 is not enough. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just playing for lack of a better word. And I'm coming through here. I'm going to darken this wall. 25 is a little bit better. It's not a lot, but um, I think it helps a little bit. And all I'm doing is just crafting the light to look the way I want the light to look. I'm going to say done. Let me show you what Dodge and Burn did. That's before fairly brighter image and that's after fairly darker image. So let me show you the sliding. You can see much more easily, right? The impact I had on the castle and the wall. The wall's not as significant. The water for sure. The hills, the sky. Makes me want to sing, the hills are alive. Um, but you can see that church, very different, right? That background, the lake or, or the river, that sort of thing. Um, very different. Now, here's the overall amount. So you can come in here and say, I like it, but it's a little too heavy handed, Jim. Okay, well, this is your opacity slider. So at zero, of course, you're getting zero uh, of the impact. But you can say, well, I really liked it, but it was too heavy. Okay, well, maybe at, you know, 75, it looks better. So there it is at 75. So it's a way to come back and sort of, uh, not sort of, but to reduce the impact of your adjustments without going back in and repainting them. You can say, I like it, but I want it 75% overall amount or 75% strength, you can think of it as. Um, at 100, maybe it's too dark. At 50, it's too light. So 75 is where it's at. And again, the before and after is still fairly significant. So before and after. Now there's a lot more you can do to this photo, but I've already had a big impact. Now, having said all of that, what I would normally do with a photo is start with probably the essential tools. And I might come in here with light and do some things like maybe make it a little bit bluer, give it a little bit of overall smart contrast, maybe take the highlights down a little bit, maybe pull the shadows back a little bit. Um, maybe use some AI Enhance. Um, despite the advent of AI Enhance, to me, you would think that something like AI Enhance with AI Accent and AI Scan Sky Enhancer would just basically remove the need for dodging and burning. I don't think it does. I think they work in uh, conjunction quite well. So AI accent, maybe I'll do a little of that. Sky enhancer, maybe a tiny bit there. Um, you know, you could play with this image for a long time. Let me go back over here and show you. Let me turn this off. And that's what I got with using the light tool and the AI enhance tool and then adding dodge and burn, 
gives me a little bit moodier image, a little bit more control over the light. And for me, that's what it comes down to. It is controlling the light. It is very specific. Exposure, highlights, shadows, the stuff in the light tool, AI sky enhancer, uh, sky, sky enhancer, AI accent, they're global. They're not necessarily super specific. They're just going across the whole image and analyzing and saying, here's what I think you should do. In other words, the computer's in charge. And I don't know about you, but I want to be in charge, right? It's my image. It's my look. It's my creation. I want to be in charge. Dodge and burn. Put you in the driver's seat. You control where the light is and where the light isn't, that sort of thing. And it can have a huge impact on your photo. So one more time, there's before with the straightforward edit with a couple of sliders that I might would use on the Essentials tab. And after, there's Dodge and Burn applied with the AI edits as well. So it works very well as a complement to your workflow. I highly recommend using Dodge and Burn. It can be very handy. Um, and every image is different. So just experiment, have fun. And uh, I, I personally think it's an important tool and one that's worth getting to know. And that's it, my friends. That's the difference between Dodge and Burn and the other lightning tools. The other lightning tools are very quick, but they're global. This one is precise and specific to wherever you want to paint it in or paint it out, I guess. And that's how it works, my friends. So I do appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching and hanging out. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that button and give me a like if you like the video. Let YouTube know that you like what I'm creating. And of course, leave me a comment and say, hey, Jim, this was helpful because of whatever. Or Jim do something else. Whatever it is, just uh, love interacting with you guys. So I appreciate that. And share if you don't mind as well. Sharing is caring, as they say. I appreciate it, my friends. Have a great day. I'll see you really soon. Thanks for watching and adios.